Hi, my name is Paul Reed, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be introducing you to Baselight Shape Tool. So um, here we've got an empty timeline with just a few ungraded shots in there, and um, I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut S here to um, drop a shape strip in there and a grade strip. So um, for this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the output of the shape strip for most of it, so we can see what's going on just for clarity. So to do that, I'm just going to move the blue render line up, and now we're looking at the output of the shape strip. We haven't actually drawn any shapes yet, so it's empty and we're not seeing anything. So the first thing we're going to want to do is drop a shape in there. So there's a couple of ways of doing that in Baselight. Firstly, we can use our Quick Shapes menu. If we click that here, you can see we've got a, got a whole bunch of presets to choose from, box, corners, edges, etc. Um, and to recall one of those, you just click on the menu option. So for example, if I want a vignette, just click on that there. And you'll see we get a default vignette there that we can start working with straight away. Um, the other nice thing about Quick Shapes actually is, as well as having the presets there, you can save your own creations back into that Quick Shapes menu. And you do that from the Customize menu here. So if you click on Customize, there's a sub-menu Quick Shape Presets, which allows you to save back, um, save back your own creations over any of those presets and rename them. So uh, let's just undo that Quick Shape that we've dropped in there. Um, the second way we create new shapes in Baselight is to uh, draw on the image directly now. To do that, the first thing you do is you select the mode. Um, we've got a mode drop down here, and it's currently set to freehand, but we've got other modes like a rectangle, ellipse, and edge. Um, for this demo, we're going to concentrate on freehand because the others are pretty self-explanatory. So we'll just leave it on freehand there. We click on our new shape button here to say we're going to create a new shape. And then we come over onto our image display and we can draw our shape in freehand mode. Um, the way we draw our shape is uh, using the mouse. We use the left mouse button to uh, drag out handles on our control points one at a time. So uh, we, we drag release. That's our first control point in there. Click, drag release, second. And you just work your way around the shape like that. So click, drag, release, click, drag, release. If you um, if you just click without dragging out a handle, then you'll get control points with no handles and straight edges like so. Um, if you make a mistake whilst you're creating your shape, it's not a problem. You can just delete the control point you've just done and redraw it. So for example, um, here I've drawn those last three or four control points. I want to get rid of them. All I do, do is use the command backspace modifier on the Mac here. Um, if you've got a Linux box, by the way, it's control backspace, but we're using a Mac, so command backspace will delete the last control point you added. So command backspace will delete that one, and you can delete the last few just by repeatedly pressing that to delete back as far as you want, and then carry on from there. So we'll just carry on working around our shape here, just draw some rough shape. And um, to close the shape, you either use the right mouse button to close it immediately, or you can just go click on the first control point you drew there and then just drag out your handle, like so. Okay, so uh, once you've drawn your shape, you've now got a few construction lines here to play with. The first one we'll talk about is this blue box around the outside, and that's the shape's transform box. Um, to adjust your shape using that, you can just click on any of the hotspots and drag them around. So if you want to rescale your shape in X and Y, just drag any of the corner control points here and you'll see we can adjust the scaling in X and Y of our shape. You can also drag the edges of the box, so if I drag the top, you scale in Y only. Um, drag the right hand side to scaling X only. Um, you can also move the shape around by this pivot control in the center, so you can click and drag that to move the shape around in its entirety. And you can also rotate the shape using the handles here, so you can just drag the handles to rotate it, like so. Um, if I click inside the curve here, you'll see that the curve itself becomes highlighted. Uh, you can see that because you get the crawling dotted line. And you, know, you can also see you get this second box, this red outline box there. And um, to show you what that's for, really, I need a second curve in this shape. So what we'll do is we'll just shrink the shape down using the blue box we just talked about, just to scale it down here. And we'll move it over into the corner. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a second curve to the same shape. So we'll still only have one shape, but it'll have two curves in it. So to do that, we come back over here onto our controls. And you can see we've got this button here, Add New Curve to Shape. So if I click on that, we can now come back over here and draw a second curve for our shape in freehand mode. So I'm just going to sketch out a second rough curve over here, same as we did before. Close it off with the right, the right mouse button there. So now we've got a single shape with two curves in it. And you can see that because the, um, the blue transform box is extended around both of the curves. And um, each one of those curves now has its own transform, its own red transform box. So that means that I can drag the curves around individually. So I can drag this curve. I can select the other curve and drag that one around with its own transform. And I can rotate those independently as well. So I can rotate it, rotate this one. I can scale it like so. But I still can move both curves together because they're part of the same shape using the overall blue transform. So I'll just select that by clicking inside the box there. And you can see we've still got that blue pivot for moving both around. And we can scale them both like so. You'll notice at the moment, actually, the pivot is over in the corner where I first put it. 
Um, but you can reposition the pivot very easily um, just, just by dragging it with the command modifier down again. So if I just drag it without the command modifier, then you move the, the, the actual shape it's around itself. But if I do the same thing while holding the command modifier down, you see all I do is reposition the pivot. So I can re reposition that to the center of the shape, and now all of the scaling and rotation will happen around that center, which is probably better if you're working that way. So that's if we've got two independent curves in the same shape that don't overlap each other. But what's interesting is the behavior when they actually do overlap each other. So what I'll do is let's, um, yeah, let's just delete that shape, both curves. So we'll just hit the delete shape button so the whole shape disappears. And let's just draw another one. And I'll just use the ellipse tool here just for simplicity. So new shape. And we'll just draw a shape from scratch here just by dragging out an ellipse like so. And again, I'm going to add a second curve to it. So add new curve to shape. Um, but rather than an ellipse, I'm going to go back to freehand, and this time I'm going to sketch a second, um, a second curve for this shape, but on top of the first one. So we'll just draw around some rough shape inside that first one, like so, and close that off uh, with the right button. And you can see, because the two curves are on top of each other, um, one actually cuts a hole out of the other one. Um, so yeah, to show you kind of, um, maybe to clear it up a little bit, what I'll do is I'll just drag that curve towards the outside, and you'll see how when they're separate, they, they become two separate curves, as it were. Um, but as soon as they start to overlap, one cuts a hole out of the other one, which is useful for creating halo type effects and stuff like that. Now, it is still one shape with two curves in it, so they do behave as one if I drag the blue transform box around. So if I select that, I can scale them both together, and I can move those around as one shape. Um, to see how that looks, actually, when you put a grade through it, what we'll do is we'll move our blue render line back down again, so we're looking at the, um, the graded image. And what we'll do is we'll just grade the inside of that up slightly, and then we'll just grade the out outside down, like so. So we'll just lower the exposure outside our shape. And you can see we've got our kind of halo-y effect there. Um, obviously, it's not sitting very well in this um, in this scene at the moment, because mostly because there's um, no feathering and there's no softness on that shape. Um, we can easily rectify that, actually, if we just click on our shape strip again. We've got this feather control here, and um, that just gives me an overall feathering around the entire shape, just to soften it up a bit. So if I just drag that out, you can see how we can just feather that and we get like a nice halo effect where there's no gray being applied in the middle, none on the outside, but we've got this kind of ring which is softened up. And if I move my blue line up again, you can see what we're doing there. We're basically soften, softening our shape using that feathering like so. And that's using our, um, our sort of constant uh, radius feathering. Um, but we've actually got two modes of feathering in base light. There's the constant radius feathering, which is great a lot of the time when you just want to quickly put some softness on a shape. But sometimes you want a little bit more control over the feathering. And um, for that, we've got another mode, which is custom in and, out, custom in and out of curves. Um, so to show you that, what we'll do is we'll just click back on our shape here um, to select the inner curve. By, by clicking inside both of them, you'll see it toggles between the in and, in and out curves there. Uh, but I'm just going to select the inner one like so. And I'm just going to delete that curve. Yeah, so you've got this option, delete um, current shape curve. So we click on that, and that will disappear. So now we're back to just having, essentially, a single vignette. Um, and we still only got um, our basic feathering on there um, with just a fixed radius, which we can modify. Um, but we'll just click on this button here, custom in out curves. And if I do that, you'll notice the feather radius slider disappears and is replaced with the inner and outer scale sliders, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, and over on our image, we've lost our fixed radius feathering. And it looks like we've only got a single curve here, which is selected. But in fact, there are two curves there. There's um, this inner feathering curve. And if I click inside the shape again, you'll see that the color changes on the outside there, but it's still selected. And that's showing that we've actually got the outer feathering curve selected. So um, yeah, and what we can do now is we can actually modify that at, um, with different amounts um, at different control points. So if I just grab this top control point on um, the outer feather curve and we drag it outwards, you'll see we start to get feathering at the top of the shape. And we can work our way around the other control points and drag them outwards, like so. Drag this one outwards. We can also um, adjust our feathering inwards, of course, um, by selecting the inner curve. Just click again inside to toggle, and then we can just drag its control point inwards. So we have the option there of feathering either inwards or outwards, depending on which curve we drag, by different amounts. Now, if you've seen this sort of thing on other systems before, you might well be used to these control points being linked together. And uh, we have support for that as well. If we come over here, we have this option to link inner and outer control points. So if I click on that, you'll see that immediately we get dotted lines between all of our inner and outer control points. And that's just to show that those control points are now linked together. And what that means is if I drag a control point on the inner curve, you'll see that the outer curve control point moves as well. Um, similarly, if I drag the handles on that control point, you'll see the outer ones are adjusted as well. You see there that they moved. Um, and yeah, so you can make adjustments around your shape with the control points linked together. 
Um, if I click um, where there isn't a control point to add a new one, you'll see that it adds one to the outer curve as well. And similarly, if I click on the outer curve, it'll add one to the outer and the inner at the same time. Um, if I want to make a modification without them being linked together, um, I don't have to come over here and unlink and then modify and go back. We can use the Shift keyboard modifier here to actually temporarily unlink them. So as soon as I press Shift now, you'll see that both, um, both curves become unlinked and um, we can drag the control points independently of each other. So I can make, um, excuse me, I drag the transform there, but we can make local adjustments to our, um, to our control points without affecting both. And then uh, when I release, they become linked again so I can make modifications together. Uh, one thing I didn't mention as well, actually, I, I mentioned that you can add control points just by clicking on the curve, but the, um, the same um, keyboard shortcut, uh, command backspace will, that we used when we were drawing the shape can also be used now to delete control points. So if I do control, um, command backspace now, you'll see that will delete the selected control point. And because they're linked, it will also um, delete the same control point on the other curve. Now, um, that's in linked mode, as I say, which may be familiar to users of other systems. But Base Lights um, is quite um, interesting, actually, when you unlink the curves. Um, let's do that. So let's come over here, and we'll turn off our linking again between the inner and outer curves. And um, now those two curves are unlinked. And in fact, they're, they're really completely independent of each other, which is quite unusual. Um, and what does that mean? Well, that means that we can do things um, like adding control points to either curve that, um, that, don't, that don't affect the other curve. So for example, if uh, let's come around this, this edge of the shape here. You can see we've got a nice smooth um, ellipse on the inside there. But let's say that I wanted to tune the outside of the curve um, for whatever reason, I wanted to adjust the feathering here. But I don't really want to affect that inner curve. Well, that's not a problem because when I add control points in base light to the outer or inner curve, it doesn't, it doesn't have to add them to the other curve as well. So if I want to tune my feathering on the outside here, I can just click and I can make adjustments to the outer feathering like so, and you'll see that although I'm adding control points pretty uh, much with disregard of what's happening on the other curve, you know, there are no other control points being added to that curve. And the other thing worth noticing is that baseline, no matter how many changes we make and how complex we make those inner and outer curves, you don't get any artifacts between them. It always gives a nice blurred softness, a, a kind of a blur between the inner and outer curves. You don't get any creasing or folds that you might see on other systems, which I think is pretty unique to baseline actually. So um, yeah, um, I mentioned earlier about these inner and outer scale sliders here. Um, they basically allow you to uh, make overall adjustments to either curve. So if I want to just scale that, in, that in, inner curve inwards, I can just use the inner scale slider here and I can just scale that right down like so. And we also have the outer slider here so we can make it bigger or smaller quite easily just by dragging this slider around. Um, the other way of affecting um, large amounts of the shape at the same time is to use multiple selection of control points. Um, to do that, it's pretty straightforward. All you do is you just left click, drag over a bunch of control points you want to select, and you can see they all become highlighted. Um, and then if I drag any of those, you'll see they all move as a group, you know, so you can just drag those around. Um, if you want to take um, some control points out of a selection, because sometimes it can be, you know, you can't get all of the control points you want just by sweep selecting. Sometimes you'll pick some up that you don't want inadvertently. It's quite straightforward. You can just shift drag a box out to deselect some of those control points now. So let's say that um, I didn't want maybe, well, this one's kind of inset here. So let's say I didn't want that control point in my, in my selection. If I just hold down shift and I drag out a box over that one, it will just take that one out of the, the selection there, but leave all the other ones in. Um, similarly, if I want to add control points to a bunch of uh, selections, I can use the command modifier on the Mac here or control modifier on Linux and drag out a box. So hold that down. And if I wanted to add this control point over here, I just hold the command down, drag out a box. And now that one's been included in my selection set as well. And we can drag those around like so. Um, in fact, uh, what's quite nice as well about um, the inner and outer curve stuff in base, like I mentioned the two curves are completely independent. And one nice side effect of that is you can actually sketch out an inner curve as we did earlier. And we can then just completely sketch out a, a completely different outer curve if we wanted to. So to do that, I've already got, I'll leave my inner curve as it is, this kind of modified ellipse thing that we started out with. And I'm just going to click on my create new outer curve button here. And uh, we're in freehand mode, which is what I want. But I can now just trace out my outer curve from scratch with no regard whatsoever for how many control points there are on my inner curve. Um, just plot it out. You can imagine I could be rotating around some, some shape, um, some object here in the image. And then we'll just close our shape off. And you can see we've got a nice, nice smooth kind of blurred fall off between those two, even though we've got a very complex outer curve with a completely different number of control points to the inner curve. And uh, the other thing to remember is all of this stuff is keyframable in base light because you know you want your shapes to animate over a period of time. So to just to show you that, what we'll do is um, we'll leave uh, we'll leave it here on the first frame, this shape that we've drawn, 
and we'll just drop a keyframe on there using this keyframe button on the shape motion and we'll set it to be linear as well and um, what we'll do now is we'll scrub a little, a little bit along our timeline like so and um, yeah down here we're just going to make some changes to our shape um, to make it very different to the first one basically just to highlight just to illustrate the point so maybe I'll scale let's make it bigger so we'll scale the outer one out a bit and I'll, I'll even drag the control points around to make it you know as, as, as difficult as as I can really so you know completely different completely arbitrary outer shape like so drag that one in maybe adjust the inner one as well what we'll do actually is we'll select all the control points on the inner curve maybe move it over here so move it over into the corner of the outer curve um, actually what we'll also do let's move a few of the control points and then maybe add a couple so make our inner curve just completely different to it as it was at the first keyframe maybe rotate the shape around and scale it anyway you get the idea just create something very very different and you'll notice now if I um, if I scrub through here like so you can see it's animating between the two and you know no matter where I stop here say halfway between the keyframes you still get this really nice fall off this really nice blurred effect there's no creasing there's no artifacts between the two curves which again as I said earlier I think is pretty unique to baselight and um, okay just to finish off I'll show you kind of a more uh, practical example of that um, a simpler example but, but you know something which you, you may find more interesting um, what we'll do is we'll go back to the first uh, the first frame we'll just delete that shape and start from scratch actually and let's go back and look at our image so just move our render line down and um, what we'll do is you know let's, let's drop a, um, a vignette on here first using our quick shape option so we'll drop a vignette on we still got our inner outer grade on there so you can see we've got our vignette if we look that's the shape and you can see the in out grade there well if we show before and after you can see what we've done it's, it's, it's a pretty good vignette but the problem I've got is I don't like where it's focused it's focused on the center of the screen I like the way the fall off kind of rolls off towards the edge of the screen if I go up you can see that's because obviously the feathering rolls off constantly towards the outside but I don't like the fact the actual center of the vignette is centered over here and not on the guy that we actually want to chase as he as he rides off into the sunset so what we'll do is we'll turn on our custom inner outer curves again and you can see we've got a hard edge shape here because we haven't actually got any custom feathering yet and uh, what we'll do is we'll position that um, where we want it on the first frame so let's just scale that down a bit like so and move it over here and maybe tune the control point slightly um, we'll drag that one up a bit drag this one maybe down oh it doesn't have to be perfect just something like that like so and I said I like the way that on the um, when we had the fixed radius feathering I like the way it kind of fell off to the edge of the screen so what we'll do is we'll actually emulate that even though we've got our center offset here we'll, we'll still have the outer curve fall off pretty much the edges of the screen so again we're just going to do create new outer curve and I'm just going to select an ellipse and we'll just drag out an ellipse basically centered around the center of the screen I don't know something like that like so and you can see now our feathering if we look at the shape you've got this kind of fall off across there and we can tune it obviously we can tweak our control points around we can move them in context if we wanted to so we can tweak where our control points are but the nice thing about this is we, I like the fact that we've got the center of the vignette over here on this guy um, but you know the outside of our vignette is to the edges of the screen and we can tune that let's maybe select the inner one and maybe scale that in a bit like so maybe reposition it slightly by selecting all the control points and drag it where we want you know something like that and if we look at the overall effect there I think it's a nicer effect because now the vignette is centered more over here um, the thing is of course that if we go back to the shape um, sorry if we go back and we look and we select the shape so we can see what's going on if I scrub further through the shot you can as I mentioned earlier he, he kind of rides off into the distance so what we'll do is we'll go back to the start of our shot and we'll make sure we've got a keyframe there again I'm just going to use linear motion for this and just to give you an example what we'll do is we'll, we'll scrub further along the shot to when he's kind of off a bit into the distance and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to scale my inner curve down a bit so it's kind of the right size and I've already got all the control points selected there so we can just drag that vignette and refocus it over here like so so that's quite nice now in that um, if I scrub between the two you can see that just the center the center of the vignette is animating as I go backwards and forwards over that you can see but the outer curve is still saying fixed we're still feathering out to the edge of the screen so that's quite nice so on the first frame we've got quite a nice effect and if we stop anywhere between the two there you can see the vignette kind of tracks him but only on the inside the outside is still fixed to the outside of the screen so uh, that's a slightly more practical example simple example but slightly more practical than the, than the one I was doing earlier um, so hopefully that's been a reasonable introduction to uh, some of the features of the shape tool and um, yes thanks a lot for listening